Welcome to ESB Science Blast. We'd like to share some of our top tips for your investigations. In this video, we'll describe some of the scientific habits that can help you make better measurements. Most ESB Science Blast investigations involve some form of measuring. You might, for example, need to measure the time it takes for someone to complete a huge yawn or the length of a snail trail or how loud your loudest scream can be. Whatever you're measuring, it'll probably involve a tool or a piece of equipment. And it almost certainly will involve you. So these are two sources of trouble already. Measuring things accurately is a big deal in science. In fact, real scientists dedicate massive amounts of their time to thinking about getting their measurements as good as they can be. We have two suggestions that will help you to copy some of the solutions they try. Our first tip is called Think Big to Measure Small. As part of Aoife's investigation, she has to measure the weight or mass of a single dried kidney bean. Her teacher only has a set of kitchen scales which measures mass in grams. When she puts one bean on the scales, the display just keeps flickering between zero grams and one gram. Why do you think this is happening? What do you think she could do to achieve a more accurate measurement of the mass of one single bean while still using the scales? It's likely that the mass of one bean is a little bit less than one gram and these scales are not really accurate enough for this little weight. These scales are better for use with heavier things. To solve the problem, Aoife has to think big to measure small. By measuring the mass of say 100 kidney beans, subtracting the mass of their container and then dividing the remainder by 100, she'll get a more accurate weight for one bean. In fact, the more beans she has, the more accurate her measurement will be. Okay, Aoife, don't get carried away. We call our second tip, measure, think, repeat. Colm is doing an investigation into how long it takes for ice cubes to melt in some of his favorite drinks. He's gone to a lot of trouble to create a fair test by using exactly the same amount of drink in each test and trying to make sure all of the ice cubes are the same size and shape. He times how long it takes for one ice cube to totally disappear in the drink. But he's a bit concerned that his judgment about the exact moment when the ice cube is gone is a bit uncertain. He wonders what a scientist would do to get the most accurate results. Have you any ideas? If possible, scientists try to avoid doing their experiments only once. In fact, they love to repeat their measurements as many times as is practical and calculate an average result. So, if Colin repeats his experiment three times and gets the following results, he can then calculate an average time for the ice cube to melt for each drink, giving a better overall result. Look at how similar his results are. Because he repeated it, he can now also claim with confidence that his judgment about the end point turned out to be actually pretty good. Repeating gives more information to scientists and usually improves accuracy. Be warned though, thinking big to measure small and measure, think, repeat are strategies that can't be applied to every kind of measurement, but make sure you keep them in mind because better measurements lead to better scientific discoveries.